Sigmund Freud. Just the name conjures images of therapy couches, repressed memories and slips of the tongue, doesn't it? This Austrian neurologist, born in 1856, didn't invent psychology, but he certainly gave it a good shake. He's the character who dragged the unconscious mind into the spotlight. Before Freud, psychology was neat and tidy. Then Freud burst in shouting, what the hell? There's weird stuff in the basement. He suggested our actions are driven by unconscious desires and he popularized talk therapy. Love him or loathe him, Freud's theories were revolutionary. They changed how we think about thinking. Let's have a gander at some of Freud's most famous theories. First up, the unconscious mind. Beneath our conscious thoughts lies a cauldron of repressed desires, fears and memories. He compared the mind to an iceberg. The conscious mind is the tip you see above water. The massive unseen chunk beneath, that's the unconscious. Next, we see that Freud suggested little boys develop unconscious desires for their mothers and see their fathers as rivals in what he calls the Oedipus theory. And then there's the id, ego and superego. The id is the impulsive, pleasure-seeking part of us. The superego is the strict headmaster, the voice of conscience. And the poor ego, it's stuck in the middle, mediating between the id and the superego. Now, before we get too comfy on the couch, let's address the elephant in the room, or should we say the controversy in the consulting room. Freud's theories have been debated, dissected, and downright debunked over the years. Some critics argue that his ideas lack scientific rigor. Where's the empirical evidence, the controlled experiments, they cry. It's all very well, but when talking about the Oedipus theory, they say, but can you measure it? Can you replicate it in a lab? The answer, my friends, is a resounding not really. And then there's the issue of falsifiability. A good scientific theory should be falsifiable, meaning it can be proven wrong. But Freud's theories are often so vague and open to interpretation that they're difficult to disprove. It's like trying to nail jelly to a wall, as they say. Let's be honest, shall we? One of the biggest criticisms leveled at Freud is his apparent obsession with sex. It's everywhere in his theories, everywhere. The Oedipus theory, penis envy, psychosexual stages of development, you can't swing a cat in Freudian theory without hitting something vaguely sexual. Now, Freud argued that sexuality is the fundamental driving force in human behavior, and he wasn't entirely wrong. But some critics argue that he overemphasized the role of sex, seeing it lurking behind every curtain and under every bed. And finally, there's the question of free will. Freud's theory of the unconscious suggests that our actions are driven by forces beyond our conscious control. So, are we really masters of our own destiny or are we just puppets dancing to the tune of our unconscious desires? It's a question that has plagued philosophers for centuries and Freud certainly didn't provide an easy answer. So after all that, where do we stand with Freud? Was he a genius or a madman? The truth, as always, is a bit more nuanced. Freud may not have got everything right. Some of his theories have aged about as well as a banana in a sauna, but he did get some things spectacularly, gloriously right. He was one of the first to recognize the importance of the unconscious mind and its impact on our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. He pioneered talk therapy, which remains a cornerstone of modern psychotherapy. And he popularized psychology, bringing it out of the dusty halls of academia and into the public consciousness. Freud's influence can still be seen today in everything from literature and film to art and advertising. He gave us a new vocabulary for understanding the human psyche. Words like ego, denial and repression are now firmly embedded in our everyday language. Was he completely off his rocker? Well, a tad obsessed with sex, perhaps. A bit too fond of a good cigar, no doubt. But bonkers? Not entirely. Freud's theories may have been controversial, but they were also groundbreaking. He dared to explore the murky depths of the human mind. And for that, we owe him a debt of gratitude. He gave us a new way of thinking about ourselves, a new language for understanding our inner world. And that's something worth talking about, wouldn't you say? And about right now, I am due for a lie down because all this talk of the unconscious has made me rather sleepy.
So before I ride off into the sunset, this is Baz, thanking you once again for joining us here on Philosophical Flicks for another episode. I'm too tired to say anything else, so I hope to see you in the next video.